Now, the thing I want to get at is that they were just inducted to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and they were the bridge from the original old school to the original new school. We, we all in agree, agreement with that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, the, and, and it was a bridge from the original MCs that originally came from out the parks, from out the Bronx, and yeah. the brothers from, what, uh, Harlem and Manhattan and all those little places in Brooklyn yeah. that came down into the Bronx or whatever and did their thing. Yeah. And they were like the first group to cut away from this style right here. Can you get a picture of that? Now this is the, uh, the second version of Furious 5, but you got right here, original Furious 5, Melly Mel, original Furious 5, Mr. Ness, a.k.a. Scorpio, original Furious 5, Keith Cowboy. Cowboy, recipe. Now, hey, you look at them and you can tell, like, you know, you can look at them and be like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? If you look at them from uh, today's standard. But these, this right here was when you talked about cats that went on stage and actually had outfits yeah. and did their things, you know? And, you know, it was like, it was like this. part of the whole, there you go. It was part of the whole, like, okay, when you got an actual stage show and you performing, for, for a true audience and not just for the cats in the park. That's right. You know, what you was told was you had to have an outfit. You yeah. had to come on stage and, and be a performer. And you, like you said, you had to perform. You had to, you know, be something extraordinary, you know. Right. You wasn't of the norm. You wasn't in the audience. You wasn't sitting down. You was on stage. You had to, almost like a flamingo, man. You know, you had to show your colors. You had and, to exude. Yeah. yeah, you know, get all the attention and shit. And that's the way them old school motherfuckers... You know, that's all they had. Like you said, they pulled from Earth, Wind, and Fire, Parliament, Funkadelic, you know, anybody for that matter. Rufus or Midnight Star, it didn't matter. So now, you had the bridge. The bridge was these cats right here. Run DMC. You know, this is their first album. Okay, you see they got the Godfather hats. And they got their little, what looks like maybe uh, Pierre Cardin sweatsuits at the time. Damn. I ain't even for sure. For the, those of y'all who remember Pierre Cardin. I have some but on the back... Right you see the more classic Run DMC with the Adidas sweatsuits, you know what I'm saying? Go down here with the leather jackets and the Adidas with the no shoestrings in them, you feel the me? Lee, the Lees. Yeah, and the Lee jeans, you know what I'm saying? So they were like the bridge, and, and the bridge was where the original cats that originally got to go out on stage did their thing as performers, where these cats was like, well, shit, we, we, we want to be and rock like the niggas did out in the park. You know, in the park they was rocking their shit like, you know. So you talking about how they went out there like the cats did before they got uh, uh, big. You know, rocking Kangos and Lees and, and Keds and Adidas and all that. And that's where I think they tried to be more one with the audience. Like, say, I'm just like you. You're just like me. But if you look at the back of this album, you can see even in the selection of, of site where they taking their pictures at. Is in hey, the hood. In the hood, brick wall, somebody hit on the wall. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it was. For, you know, that, that was a change from like, hey, we gonna make sure that, and that, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not um, trying to um, disgrace or say nothing bad about the Furious Five or any of the groups previous. You know, Africa Bambada and respect to the Zulu Nation, all them brothers, you know what I'm saying? They, they basically was just making a change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the change wasn't that they was going um, basically to be anything other than what was already truly in the park already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, once again, just to reiterate what my man Marky Loke was saying, is that people said, hey, I'm on stage now, so when you go on stage, you got to put on a costume, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Which is the way they did it. These brothers were saying, nah, man, let's flip it. And that's all it was, and it was like, it was like that shit that was like, God damn. It was, it was, it was, it was really, it was a, it was like a hood record. Now yeah. I don't know if hood guru remember, we used to sit on Al's porch and just play that shit like, yeah, just sit there, <laughs> you know, it just like, yeah, cause that, that was like that shit that was like. Hella aggressive. And it that was 83, right? Yeah, I was like 83. That was like 83. Yeah, I 82. remember I was at USC sports camp. Motherfucker came by like a motherfucking regal or something. Just, like you said, boom, boom. Ah, 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 ah. 
And you just like, that's gangsta. See, before gangsta music, y'all want to shoot them up, that was gangsta music. Yeah. Gangsters played certain music, that's what made it gangsta music. I guess 82, you know, you was coming with, you know, the, the electronic sound, you know, motherfuckers was going from popping to breaking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all that type of shit, you know, at least out here, and I know East Coast motherfuckers gonna say, yeah, we was doing that shit in, in 73 or whatever, hey, respect to you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, you know, out this way, you know, LA and shit, West Coast, motherfuckers, 82, it was electronic shit, you know, African Bob Bottle was holding it down and, Crap, and yeah, Crap, I mean, yeah. shit. The electronic style. The electronic, the electronic style, style, style. Whether, you know, for, for, Johnson for everybody, yeah. You know, and then, next thing you know, it's like, I'll never forget, man. I mean, we on the bus getting bust out the motherfucking, you know, party V and shit. These motherfuckers brought it right back. And it's like, damn. Some MC rhyme, so I said this rhyme I'm about to say. The rhyme was there, but then it went this way. You know, you had Run, who MC style wise, he had the charisma, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, he was the type of motherfucker that's like, I mean, you might, you know, these days everybody want to go on Nas or, you know, Rakim as far as lyrics and stuff. He wasn't necessarily the, the, the greatest lyricist in the world, but when it came to being what was known as an MC, you know, as far as having the charisma, Keeping you in, in, energized with the rhyme, doing the show, giving it up, keeping the crowd involved. You know, run half that. DMC in the place to be. I go to St. John's University. And since Kenny got it, I acquired the knowledge. And after 12th grade, I went straight to college. Yeah, I know a lot of motherfuckers look at him number two. Being such a um, contrast from run, sometimes it's like, it really is like he was number one because he was waiting for that nigga to jump in with that, like, Damn, that okay, voice. yeah, that, that, you know, Run had that, like, okay, it's, you can feel the rhythm in his rhyme and all that stuff. This motherfucker came and just left field your ass, like, Man. nigga, oh my God, you just can't wait to hear that motherfucker just come in and just, and just slow it down for you, you know what I'm saying? Like